Well, we're going to be uh, tackling all about editing with Mylio Photos and uh, show you how to edit with what's in the application. There's some new improvements with the uh, 22.1 update one. Uh, so there'll be some cool things to show there. And then we'll also show you how to use the, the external editing function, which is pretty cool. So, uh, and then as Angela mentioned, right after this, we'll be going into a, a what's new with update one uh, coffee break and taking a look at some cool things there for those of you who have time. Uh, so that's cool. So um, what you guys signed up for, or if you're watching the replay is to learn about the editing tools that are inside of Mylio Photos and also how to use the improved open in command that will hand it off to other tools. So pretty cool stuff. Uh, please go ahead and put those questions into the Q&A uh, pod. It'll help us answer them for you and be happy to do that. Uh, my name's Rich Harrington. Uh, I am a member of the product team and a photographer and a photo educator. And uh, Angela, if you'd like to introduce yourself as well. Sure. My name is Angela Andrew and I'm a product evangelist for Mylio Photos. I'm also a fine art photographer and photo educator and my big love with photography is actually editing. I love to go out and shoot, but I think I love the process behind the computer with all of my favorite apps just as much. So this is a great topic. Um, probably one of my favorites. I could do several webinars on this particular <laughs> issue. <laughs> I'm sure we can come back to it. So uh, thank you all for, for joining us. We did make some improvements with the recent update, and I just want to summarize those before we jump in and, and show you what's in there. Uh, so first off, we did make some overall improvements to the built-in editing tools. Uh, this included the addition of a levels command, which is useful for fixing exposure, tonality, and since it has individual color channels now, uh, you could do color correction at a channel level, which is great for things like faded historical photos or underwater photography. There's lots of things that could benefit from this. Uh, and then we added a vignette tool, which is way more than just a vignette. It can actually be used for creative relighting. So we're going to show you what those are looking like today. Uh, another thing that I'm really happy that we were able to get in was while we always had a 16-bit workflow, it wasn't exposed to you fully. And so now we've actually fully unlocked that and we've added color space controls. So when you go to export your images, you are actually able to export 16-bit TIFF files. So you'll be able to go ahead and actually uh, pull that out. And then uh, we will show you the idea here of being able to control the color space that you assign. So we'll talk a little bit later about what that means. Not everyone's familiar, but depending upon your goal with the image, whether it's to share it directly to the web, or if you want to use it in other computer applications, or if you want to specifically hand it off to other photo editing applications, we can actually choose color spaces. And there's optimized color spaces for different purposes with those files. So um, we'll cover that more in depth as we dig in. And then, uh, you know, we'll also show you this idea here of the open with command, which has been significantly expanded. Uh, you now can target external applications. And in the past, you were able to only hand off the raw files or the original file. Now you can hand off the edits that you've made inside of Mylio and uh, decide if you're handing off a TIFF, a PNG, or a JPEG, uh, as well as specify the bit depth and color space, which is pretty cool. So uh, we'll cover how all of that works. And uh, that's going to allow you to really go in, uh, target what you want to export and the file format and how it gets handed off, which is pretty cool. So uh, we'll walk through all of that here in just a second. And uh, Angela, I want to let you kick things off so people can sure. sort of see this workflow. But uh, there's lots of stuff we can do inside now. So when you're ready, go ahead and uh, share your screen and then right. we can uh, kick off with some examples. All right, well, let's go ahead and do this. And while you're opening, I'll tackle a couple of the questions that popped up. Uh, so I saw a question about returning DNGs uh, from Topaz. So we'll have to take a look at that. Uh, generally speaking, DNGs are designed to be camera formats. Some software tools are starting to use DNGs to hand off edits, but those are very proprietary and uh, how they hand off. So for example, 
uh, while DXO can write a DNG file, it only works in DXO or Adobe, and they don't let it work with anything else. So DNG is not really meant to be a file format for handing edits off. I would much strongly recommend you look at things like 16-bit TIFF. Uh, once you start doing per pixel edits, DNG is not a format you want to be in. Uh, all it's doing when you choose that DNG is stiffing, stuffing a 16-bit TIFF file inside the DNG container on top of the raw file with some proprietary code that some tools can access and most can't. It's really a terrible workflow. So um, I can go more into that later on, but there you go. And uh, let's keep going. All right. Well, we're going to start off with an example of editing within Mylio Photos. And the edit that I'm going to show you, I'm doing this on my computer, but you can do this on your iPad, your tablet, your phone, wherever you are, because I'm in Mylio Photos, I'm not leaving Mylio Photos. And if you have a smart preview available on your device, you have access to all of your raw data. So this is a photo that I actually captured last night. I was out at the Hotel Del Coronado, which is a beautiful historic hotel here in San Diego. And this is on their Christmas tree in the lobby. And it's just, they have a place marvelously decked out. You'll see a few more of my images throughout the presentation today, but this is one that I edited strictly in Mylio Photos. So let's take a look at the before. You can click on this icon here to compare your before and after. So just go ahead and click that. And there's my before and there's my after. And this was a really quick edit and it really made it pop and look much, much better. So I'm gonna start by resetting these edits. And you'll notice that I actually have two versions of this photo here in my film strip. So what I like to do when I do that, when I take pictures like this is I have slightly shaky hands. So I usually click off at least two or three frames for any given shot, because I know that at least one of those is bound to be sharp. Now this is becoming less and less of an issue as image stabilization in cameras gets better. Um, these were both pretty sharp. So let's go ahead and zoom in on this and take a look. I'd say that's pretty sharp, as is that one. So it's really your pick as to which one you wanna edit. I think maybe the lighting on this one is a little bit better. So we'll edit this one. And there's no need to save two images that are basically the same. So I'm actually going to hit the X key on my keyboard to mark that one as a reject so I can come back and delete that later. Now let's jump over to this image. I'm going to zoom back out and I'm going to start with auto enhance. And this is just a preset that brightens up the colors, opens up the exposure, brightens it up a bit. And overall, it looks better. I'm also going to use auto color and that's just going to do a subtle color adjustment. There wasn't a whole lot that it did for this particular image. I think auto enhance took care of most of it. And already this image looks better. So we can take a look at the before and the after. Now let's stylize this a little bit. Um, I'm gonna scroll down into the tone controls. One thing when this got brightened up is it did lose a little bit of contrast. So you can see down here that the details are a little bit what I would call muddy, they're a little faded feeling. So I'm gonna grab the contrast slider and just slightly move that up to the right. And you'll see that just bring in a little bit more depth and dimension to this area here in the foreground. From here, I'm going to scroll down and take a look at some of the details. Now, if we go down to the bottom, here's our details section. We have sharpening and noise reduction. I'm going to briefly click over to the info panel and take a look at my settings. And I can see right here that I shot that at ISO 2000, which for my camera, it performs pretty well at higher ISOs. But if I zoom in, you can still see there is a little bit of image noise in here. So I can correct that really quickly by just scrolling down to the bottom to that details section and choosing that light noise reduction. And you wanna be careful with noise reduction because there is a trade-off. When you click that, you're going to lose some degree of detail because it's trying to get rid of that grain that's in the image. So you wanna do as little as possible. Um, from here, I'm gonna add a little bit of sharpening just to bring back some of the detail that I lost. And you can see that it's bringing back some of that fine detail here around the eyes and little feathers of this ornament. And let's zoom out. This image is looking a lot better. Again, we can take a look at how far we've come. There's the before and the after. Now, the final touch that I wanna add is using the new vignette tool. And I love adding a nice, soft, non-intrusive vignette to most of my photos. And what that does is it guides the viewer's eye to your subject. So I'm gonna pull down the amount slider to the left. If you pull it to the right, it's gonna add a white vignette. Pull it to the left, it's gonna add black. And I'm going to bring that down right about there. And you'll see that's a pretty harsh black so far right around the edges. When you have a vignette, the last thing you want somebody to say is, hey, that's a nice vignette. 
You don't want people to know that you added it. You want it to just subtly guide your eye into the subject, which in this case is this owl. So I'm going to take the size, bring this a little bit small. You can see that circle around the, the owl is getting a little bit darker. And I'm going to bring the feather up. And what this does is this makes the transition between the light and the dark area much smoother. And it just, I'm going to bring that up really high for a nice smooth transition. And then I can even bring the size in a little bit smaller. That's looking pretty good. And then I think my favorite feature in this tool is the choose subject. So I can click on choose subject. And this opens up a separate panel. You can see at the bottom here, we have a reset and a done. And then I can just click on the center of my subject and that adjusts the placement of the vignette so that the face of my subject, this little owl, is right in the middle of the frame. When I'm done, I can click done. If I want to reposition that, as long as that little blue dot in the middle is active on your screen, you can click around and reposition this to the point that you like. So I'm going to keep that right there on his nose, click done, and there's my image. So let's take a look at the before and the after. And this is just a quick edit here in my Leo Photos, and I think it looks great. Rich, what do you think? Yeah, I think it definitely turned out quite nice. Yeah. So, and I didn't even have to leave the app and I could have done this on my phone. I could have done this on my iPad. And then this image is ready to share. So if I wanted to put this up on Facebook or share it on Instagram, this image is ready to go. And I didn't have to go anywhere outside of Milio, which I think Very is nice. pretty cool. Very nice. So uh, would you like me to tackle a few? Yeah, go for it. All right. So uh, I'm going to share my screen for a second here. And uh, I've been using a feature that a lot of folks aren't familiar with. Uh, we're actually going to be updating it here really soon. Uh, it's called the Milio Clipboard. So it's at the bottom here, and it serves as a quick album. So what I was doing is I browsed through my library and picked out some things I wanted to show you how to edit today, is I just went and grabbed some pictures and dragged them in. And you see, you could put it in. Now, when you do this, there's an add and a clear button. We're going to update this later to make it easier to do some other cool things. Uh, and that includes the ability to save this to an album and export it. So that's something we're working on for the future. Uh, we'll be updating this clipboard uh, and actually renaming it here real soon, too, just so it's a little more discoverable. But uh, what's cool about that is when you've done that, you can actually gather things. Another cool thing I did is I wanted to find my underwater photographs quickly, and I only use one of two cameras underwater, uh, a GoPro or my DxO camera. Uh, I don't have a full dive rig like JC, which I'd love to get someday, but um, believe it or not, JC, there is some camera gear I don't own. <laughs> so uh, one cool thing you could do that a lot of people don't know is under library stats, you can click on cameras. And um, yes, I do play with a lot of cameras. I get sent cameras to review and test. That's why I have so many insane numbers in here. Uh, although I have been an original iPhone owner. But the point is, is that you can scroll down and find particular cameras and then click and go there. So that way I was able to find all my dive images from different places by just going there very quickly and searching by camera, which is a cool thing you can do. All right, why don't we go ahead and I'm just gonna put these into an album because I know that we're gonna take some turns editing here today. And so I'm just gonna create a new album called To Edit. And I'll create that. And I'm just gonna grab all of these and drop it in. And so now I've got some photos that we can tackle. One of the first things I wanna show you is using this on old photos. So the levels adjustment is surprisingly good on old photos. So let me take two pictures here. Uh, I'll go into these here and I'm gonna reset this to start. So this was actually a scanned negative. So if you are working with a scanner back in the days of film and you have slides or film, uh, they might be negatives, particularly film. And so I just had a chance to load in some pictures from my wedding. And a lot of people working with scans may have film. Well, first off, you'll see here, we added a new tool in the color section, and that is the ability here to invert, which is going to flip the positives to negatives. However, with film, you get this still weird issue. It's not quite done yet. And what's kind of challenging is, is if you look at the individual channels, the red, the green, and the blue, you see also that as film ages and starts to change a little bit, sometimes the color components get out of date. 
So you could manually start to move all of these components here on each channel to fix that, or click the auto color button and it automatically balances out the red, green, and blue channels perfectly. Now, earlier, Angela, you did the auto enhance and the auto color. I actually don't like to put those two together. Um, I would suggest that most of the time, auto color will fix color issues and brighten. We will be adding an auto tone just for um, fixing contrast. Auto enhance is great if you want a brighter, more saturated image. So it's kind of a consumer friendly way of popping stuff uh, for what a lot of people like, but you don't really need to use the two together. Um, and this works great as you see here to kind of balance that. And then you could say, oh, with the skin tones, let me just move that middle slider a little bit just to warm or cool the skin tones to dial that in. And so that is the concept of working with the scan. And then remember, like I'll just reset this picture here as well. Uh, you can actually take that, copy edits, and select other pictures that have the same challenge and hit paste, and they're instantly fixed. So all of these are non-destructive and can be applied right there to your image. So that works great. And if it's not a scanned negative, let's just say it's a scanned photo here for a second. Uh, I'll go ahead and clear this out for a second. And let me just go back to the album. Let me close the clipboard. And so here I have a scanned photo. So when I was a kid with my 110 film camera that I got from school for selling candy bars, <laughs> literally, uh, you know, this is a picture of the Olympics I got to visit back in 1984 in Los Angeles. It was pretty cool. Uh, between the age of the photo and the quality of the camera and where technology was back then, this picture has some challenges. So those levels commands are still useful. Now you'll find the auto color has a button here too. You can click that and it's gonna help. And then if you wanna use presets here, you'll find some simple options that you can choose. These can be helpful uh, if you want, or just come on down and take a look still at those levels. So with levels open, looking at the RGB channels here, I can still balance that. And it looks pretty good. There is also eyedroppers here for white and black. So I could click and say, this should be white. And this should be black. And that's a manual way of tweaking it. Now you'll see that that actually pulled those colors in even further, adding some more contrast. And what that really did was it brought the reds in more to really tighten those up. So if you modify that, you might find yourself needing to fuss a little, but still pretty solid to get you closer. Then on top of that, feel free to bring in a little bit of vibrance just to improve it and take a look down under details and you can sharpen a bit. Now, again, there's nothing magical that we can do to recover a blown out sky and something that was shot on film like this, but we can definitely bring it back. But even with other pictures, auto color is going to be helpful. It's going to take a look at those faded pictures that have lost things as the prints have faded over time and let you bring it back. Uh, so there you go. Uh, I was just recently loading in some old pictures to show the kids. And this is me at, I think, age five. So <laughs> I'd love to have that hair back. But besides that, uh, I could bring those things back to life and then still take advantage of the other adjustments, like putting in a little bit of vibrance there on the skin tone uh, just to get that corrected. And then as you look at the overall luminance channel, this is where you're free to not tweak the color, but do things like shift the black point or the midpoint to adjust the exposure or the white point. So you can do some pretty cool things in there to uh, really finesse that image. All right, Angela, why don't I go ahead and pass it back to you and I'll do some modern pictures next, but I just wanted to tackle some scans really quick. Awesome. I'm glad you threw that in there because those are important and it's, I love how the new tools are able to handle those without having to go out to external applications and that auto color just does an amazing job. I'm, I'm blown away by the invert and auto color on the, on the negatives every time I see it.
Yeah. And, and even with just old faded photos that aren't negatives, autocolor, it's really optimized for scanned photos, which is something that Milio is optimized for. Milio Photos is perfect for scanned images because it actually lets you go in and modify the metadata and people tag and all of those great things that we take for granted with digital photos. We can do those on our older analog photos as well. Yep. All right. Well, let me jump into sharing my screen. And we can take a, a look at some more modern pictures. This was also captured last night. And I could edit it here in Milio or I can invoke an external editor. And an external editor, there's many of them out there. Milio works with just about every single one of them that I can think of. Um, it gives you additional tools to modify your images. Um, the the options inside of Milio Photos are great for basic edits, but if you wanna do advanced creative things, sometimes an external editor is necessary. So I wanna go ahead and jump up here to the photo menu and show you the open with. And this is gonna list all of the applicable applications that can open this photo. Now, one thing I've heard from other users is what happens if the, the application that I wanna use isn't listed. So mm -hmm. if you're on a Mac, it's really, really easy. All you have to do is scroll down to other and this opens up your applications folder and you can go ahead and locate that application that you wanna use. Um, if you're on Windows, it's a little bit trickier, but the key is, is you don't have to ever go into that other menu and search for it every time. Once you do the process, those applications will permanently appear in that menu. So I'm gonna put into the chat really quick, a link to the manual where you can find instructions on how to do that. So give me just a second. Yep, and it's pretty straightforward. All you're doing, and this is controlled by the operating system, Milio Photos can't control what your computer thinks. One file can open another file. That's an OS issue. Yes. So what you could do there is you are effectively on Mac or Windows saying, oh, I'd like to associate this file type with this application and give it permission to open. Uh, another thing to realize if you're trying to batch open files make sure you didn't randomly select like a video file or a document by mistake and you're trying to batch hand off because if you have one stray file type in there, your computer might go, oh, these can't be opened because they all can't be opened by this application. So, but you can send multiple pictures at once, which is pretty cool. Absolutely. And I will show that here in just a second. Um, when you go into the manual that's here under the edit using the open with command, this is in the editing your photos chapter. And a couple of things to note about the manual, if you haven't dug into it yet, is each one of these sections that has the arrow has more information and subchapters underneath it. So working with external editors is here at the bottom of the editing chapter. And when you get into this chapter, it starts off with the basic opening that menu that I just showed you. If you scroll down to about halfway through, this is where the information is on adding in applications if you don't see what you need in that menu. So I want to make sure you have that information and know how to get to it. So let me go ahead and move that off the screen. And let's start with this photo here. Now, I like to bracket my images when I'm out shooting. This is completely optional. But what I do is I take the same photo at different exposure levels. And then I can use software to merge them together. And there's many, many applications you can use to do this. Um, one of those is Luminar Neo. Um, I also do this sometimes using um, Adobe Camera Raw. I've used Photomatics. Um, there's many, many applications out there that can merge multiple exposures into a single exposure. All of them have um, their pros and cons, and a lot of them give a slightly different style. But today I wanna to show you Luminar Neo because I know we've had a few users who have been wondering how to get your images to Luminar Neo and back to Mylio. So I wanna show you how to do that. Since I'm gonna be sending three images, I'm going to click back to the grid and hold down my shift key. I've got the first one selected. You can see it with the blue box and hold down the shift key and click that third one. So now all three of those images are selected. I can then go up to the photo menu and choose open with and choose Luminar Neo. And here we have a couple of options. Today, I'm gonna edit the original, which is a raw file. But if you've made changes to these images in my Leo photos, you can also send an image, the TIFF, with those edits applied. And you're, there's a few options here as to what type of file you might wanna send, the color space and your bit depth. But like I said, for this in this instance, I want to use the original. So I'm going to go ahead and click back to edit original and continue. And this is going to launch Luminar Neo directly from my Leo photos. And it's going to bring all three of those images in to the single image edit section. 
So if you've worked with Luminar yeah, in the past, I, you've I don't probably mean noticed to... that you can add folders of images, which is not what we want to do today. And then you can also open up a single image. So when you use Mylio with Luminar, this is where your images go into the single image edits. Now, all three of my images here are selected. I'm in the catalog view. I'm going to grab those images and drag them over here to the HDR merge. From here, I'm going to click on the settings, and I definitely want to auto align these. I was shooting them handheld, so there probably is a slight shift between each frame. I also like to choose the chromatic aberration reduction. That helps if you have something that's backlit. Sometimes you get that red or green fringe on the side of an image of something that's backlit. This gets rid of it. And ghost reduction is going to take care of the fact that there is movement here on this flag. So I'm going to go ahead and choose ghost reduction. If there's no movement in the frame, if it's completely still day with no wind or you're indoors, you might want to go ahead and turn that off. Only use that if necessary. And I'm going to choose low. Again, use the lowest amount possible because there are trade-offs in the quality of the processing, the higher the noise reduction you use. I'm going to go ahead and click out of there and tell it to merge. And what that's going to do is create a brand new image and pop it into this folder here called HDR merge. So we'll give that a moment to process and it'll jump me over there as soon as it's done. And sometimes it takes a little while. So it depends on how large the images are that you're processing and what uh, choices you've made as far as those settings. So here's that image. Let's go ahead and open that up and do a quick edit. And I'm gonna jump down straight to Enhance AI. Let's go ahead and pull that up to the right. And you'll see that that's improving my exposure, improving the colors. Looks really nice. We'll add a little bit of structure. This adds some mid-tone contrast and detail. There we go. And I think I also want to do a little bit to improve the sky. I'm going to jump over to my edits and back down to the Enhance AI. And this is where I added Accent AI. You'll notice there's also a sky enhancer. I can bring that up and you'll see how that's just intensifying the sky there a little bit. Just a tiny bit of that I like. Add our structure back and go back to our tools. And let's see, what else do we want to do here? I'm going to do maybe a slight crop to straighten this out a little bit. It's just a tiny bit tilted. So let's go ahead and move that around right there. Get that flagpole at the top straight and maybe pull in just a bit here on the bottom. Maybe right about there. I think that looks good. Hit return on my keyboard. And I think this image is done. So we can take a look from the before and the after. And I'm just gonna quickly jump back to Milio here so you can see what the middle exposure looked like. So this is what I started with. If I had just had one photo to work with, this is my image. And by combining those three, I was able to get all of that beautiful detail in the sky and the detail here on the building. So from here, I'm going to export this so it goes back into my Mylio Photos library. So I'm gonna go up to File and Export. And here's where you're gonna use that new Mylio inbox. So if you haven't discovered this yet, this is a great place when you're working with photos and external editors that don't make it easy to find that folder where this originated, the Mylio inbox is a lifesaver. So with some applications that it lets you put it back into the folder that it came from, that's the best option. But in applications like Neo, where that's not great, you have the Mylio inbox, and this is kind of a catch-all for anything you wanna send back to the app. And then you can move it to the folder that it belongs once it's in Mylio. It's much easier there than trying to dig through your file system and find that specific folder. I'm going to do, let's say some low sharpening, keep the original size, keep my color space, my format. I'm gonna keep this at a resolution of 300 and I'm just going to choose save. And that's going to export a TIFF of this image with its edits back to that Mylio inbox and now if I switch back to my Leo Photos and I double click on folders to go to my top level folder, here's my my Leo inbox. Sometimes take, it takes a little while for it to scan and for it to pop up here, but this is where that edited image is going to land. Now, I'm going to just show you with another image because this, sometimes it scans slowly when I'm on Zoom and it'll take a couple of minutes for that image to pop up here, but how easy it is to get an image back to where it's supposed to go. So let's take this image here. I'm going to look at the info panel really quick, and I can see that I captured this on July 27, 2022. I'm going to right click on my image and say move to folder. 
And I happen to be one of those nutcases that organizes everything meticulously by date. So that makes things a lot easier to find when you're looking through your folder structure. Now, everybody thinks things through differently. If dates work for you, great. If topics work for you, that's also a very valid way to go. Um, but this makes it easy for me to just look at the date, the timestamp on my image, and pop it back in the folder where it belongs. So I'm going to scroll down to 2022. You can also just type that into the filter box. <laughs> um, if I remember exactly what the file folder name is, yes. Sure. <laughs> uh, and then I'm just going to go down to July 27. It's not that hard. So there's my July 27, and I can select that, and that's going to move that image to the folder where it belongs. And so now everything is back to being organized, and I didn't have to leave my Leo to do that. I didn't have to go digging through my file system. Doing it here in the application is much, much easier. So that's how you round trip from Luminar Neo back to my Leo Photos. It's very simple, and sometimes if things take a little while for them to pop up, if you quit my Leo and restart it, that usually forces a scan, and those images will appear. That's kind of my little trick. Great. And uh, there are, uh, those scans will sometimes get interrupted if you are um, in the middle of doing a sync or other things, but it's also sometimes just leaving the folder and come back will work, or you can yep. right click on a folder and tell it to scan for changes. There's lots of ways to, to nudge it to the top. So that's great. Um, so there's a question about metadata coming over. So the metadata is supposed to come over uh, when you pass, John, um, but you can also take a look under your export settings uh, when you go to export an image. And so if you've got like an image selected, uh, you can look at how your metadata settings were set in there and make sure that you didn't have say share or things turned on. So you could take a look under some of those things like export and just check uh, what your settings are currently set to. And that should affect that and work pretty well. Okay, what I'm going to do here is uh, walk you guys through some different types of editing uh, using things. My system is, of course, in the middle of thinking hard. <laughs> so let me <laughs> just do a refresh here. Uh, give me one second to refresh real quick. So um, there we go. It came back. So uh, let me talk about something we can do. So first off, Earlier, we were talking about that use of auto color. This is an underwater photo. And so underwater photos are sometimes subject to some interesting color challenges uh, due to where we're at. And then you can still, as you kind of balance that out, take advantage of things like eyedroppers and try setting uh, different tones. So, you know, that's going to move those things around to different areas. Uh, if it's too strong, you can reset. But in this case, I like the general place where it ended up, but I want to fix this little blemish here uh, where the coral had grown around the rock. So what I can do is hand this off to another tool. In this case, I'm going to go to something like Photoshop, which contains the ability to tweak that. Now, when I choose open in, I want to preserve uh, the edits that I've already done. So I'm going to keep the quality in place for those edits. So I'm going to choose to edit a copy that already has the Milio adjustments. In this case, I'm going to go with TIFF and it's up to you which you choose here. Uh, if you want the maximum of range of color, then Protophoto RGB is the best. But if, and that's only if you intend to keep editing it. Adobe RGB is also quite good for editing and is going to look fine when you post to the web. Display P3 is specifically for display on uh, P3 type monitors, which are going to be things like iPads, iPhones, and other screens that are labeled as HDR. And then sRGB is the lowest quality color space that's most compatible with the web that I generally don't recommend you do unless you're really trying to get it out there uh, for maximum compatibility in older web browsers. So I'm going to stick with Adobe RGB 16-bit TIFF, click continue. And that's going to fire open Milio and do the handoff to Photoshop. Now, for some odd reason, Photoshop is off the page. Let me try resetting that. There we go. And uh, let me just um, do a quick heal here. So one of the things I like to do is uh, if I'm going to make a selection, I'll target the area that I want to use. I like to press uh, Q for quick mask and then just 
I'll just start to basically uh, brush in on the image. Or you can make a basic selection uh, around the problem area first to see it. I'm just using the polygonal lasso there, double click, and then Q for quick mask. Uh, and what that does here is quick mask will let you see it. Now, if you lose the selection, you can just go and choose to reselect it really quick. I'm not sure why that disappeared on me. So let me just do it again around. And I'm just targeting this general problematic area that needs some tweaking. There we go. Okay. So for some reason, quick mask is not working on the system, but that's okay. We'll move forward. So once I have that selection, uh, it's very easy to make a uh, healing using the content aware fill command. So there's a basic selection and I'll choose edit and I'll come down and I'm gonna do content aware fill. Now, when you do this, make sure the layer itself is active. There we go. So content aware fill. This is gonna bring up in a new dialogue that's gonna show you two things that are happening. So on the left-hand side, what you're seeing is going to be uh, the area that it's willing to look at or select from, okay? So that's going to allow you to kind of see that. And then this is showing you a preview of what the change is going to look like, okay? So what I like to do is say, go ahead and adapt the color as needed. And that looks at uh, the area there and does a better match on color. Then go ahead and adapt and rotate the texture if needed to help line things up a little bit. It thinks and then it calculates. And then you could tell it if needed to adjust the scale. And again, that'll just analyze it and create it. There we go. I can click OK and it generated the new texture there to fill in the damaged area on the coral. And I've taken that and put it in there and made that adjustment. So pretty straightforward, okay? Now, if I go through uh, and I see there's a question there about Radiant. So Radiant, if you need to, depending upon your application, uh, if you're on Mac or Windows, like Angela said, go through and update it. Uh, she shared a link earlier on how to update that, but I'll show you what it looks like once it is updated. So uh, Radiant has an integration that makes it easy to hand off your images from Milio to Radiant. And so you can select multiple photos at once and it's going to analyze those pictures, recognize the content of the photos and offer to fix them. So here we go, I've got these selected and I'll say photo open with Radiant Photo. And what that'll do is, again, ask me what I wanna do. In this case, I'm gonna keep the Milio Photos adjustments and make 16-bit TIFFs and hand them off. And I'll click Continue. Or you can hand off the originals if you wanted to. But I'll click Continue. And this is gonna open up those files. So Radiant launches, and you should see all of those images pop into it here. There we go. I had some other photos that I was working with earlier, but there we go. Looks like they opened, good. And let me just close these ones that I was using yesterday. And uh, it cues them all up into its own film strip that's a lot like the film strip inside of Mylia. So now it's analyzing. And for example, it recognized this as underwater images. And so it improved the contrast. And then using the tint correction here, I can correct for tint. And it's gonna allow me to compensate and color correct for those issues. They also offer, for example, under color here, a underwater corrective filter that you can dial in the intensity on. And that can also help with color cast issues. Here, it recognized this as a landscape, which it should. And I could take advantage of things like color contrast to restore washed out color. Or I can use the light diffusion here uh, under the lighting section, just to soften the light a little bit in the scene and add some rich depth. There's the before and the after as it brought that to life. 
And so it has really good tools for things like tint correction. So when you encounter an image that has tint, it could actually compensate that. And then under portrait, it also has portrait tools that you could use to enhance faces. So here it missed one of the faces with AI. So I'll just click to add. There we go. And apply. And if you need to, you can even finesse where the AI puts the eye points. And now I could take advantage of some simple adjustments, for example, like shine removal. And that tones down the shiny skin on the faces. So you see where people had those hot spots. We were at an event and sweaty because it was a wedding. <laughs> I'd been dancing and other things. And now we could tone that down. Uh, I can even skin tone and warm up the skin a little bit and say, go ahead and bring out the skin tones a little bit and just add a little foundation for warmer skin. And you can see there how it toned down the shine and brought out the skin tones very naturally. And so the point is, is that this is meant to be fast and simple. If you find something that you wanna fix, for example, you can copy and edit, and I could just say, copy settings from this underwater and paste to that underwater and reuse them. And so it just becomes really simple. And later on, you guys will start to learn, there's actually some cool film stock simulations that you can play with. Once you're all done, Mylio has integration built right in. And so what you can do is come up and choose save all. And if you pick file name display, then those are dropped back into your Mylio library and those will be used as the image that Mylio sees. Plus by default, it'll put them back in the same folder as original. So it doesn't matter that these came from a bunch of different locations. So I can click save and it will batch process all the files, drop them back onto my hard drive in the exact same place as the originals, but with a new name. And Mylio will detect those, show them as the preferred image and sync them to all of my devices automatically. So that's a nice smooth round trip workflow. And I can close that out. Uh, if you're already a Mylio customer, uh, I think we already sent out an email with this. Otherwise we'll post it to the community, but they have a discount for you uh, that you can use. So I'll go ahead and let you do one now, Angela. <laughs> All right. Well, I think I'd like to show a bit about why I've drift started drifting away from using Lightroom. And I'm going to jump, so you see the picture finally popped up from my last edit. It is here in my inbox. But I'm going to jump back to my folders and go into my photos folder, scroll down to those images again that I took yesterday. And I want to do a quick raw edit using Adobe Camera Raw, which has all of the same tools for editing as Lightroom. So if you've transitioned to using Mylio Photos, Mylio Photos has become your home base, and then trying to maintain two separate libraries, your Lightroom library and your Mylio library, if that's feeling tedious, and you like the tools that you have available in Lightroom for editing, you can still use that with Adobe Camera Raw when you launch Photoshop. So Angela, it sounds here. like I finally converted you. <laughs> you did. Yeah, you, you totally did. I still jump into Lightroom for a few things, but I don't do it nearly as much as I used to. So Camera Raw has up. every setting that Lightroom does and about 15 more, in fact. <laughs> and exactly. Rich, you don't, you don't know this, but Angela in turn converted me. <laughs> oh, good. Good. I'm glad we can all join the same church. <laughs> oh, my goodness. All right. So let's take an image that I captured at the beach. And this was over by that Hotel Del Coronado. You can see we had some beautiful light coming through the clouds. So let's grab this one here. I already did an edit on this earlier. So that's my edited image. But here's my, my raw image. So let's edit this using Adobe Camera Raw and make use of all of those fabulous tools that you're used to in Lightroom. So I'm going to go up to the photo menu and choose open with, and you'll notice that Photoshop is not here in my list. So all I have to do is click on other, and I'm going to scroll down to the Photoshop folder and click on the Photoshop app and choose open. And Make sure you choose raw. So if you have something other than raw, it's going to go straight into Photoshop. If you have a raw image, it's going to launch Adobe Camera Raw and give you all those great Lightroom-like tools. So I'm going to go ahead and hit continue, let it launch Photoshop, and it'll plop me right here into Adobe Camera Raw. Go ahead and make that bigger, where I have access to all of my tools. Now you'll see at the bottom here, there's a film strip. 
I could open up a bunch of images from Mylio, and I did this last night with a handful of these, and I can go through and process them here just like I would in Lightroom. So let me go ahead and get this toolbar off the screen, and let's do a little bit of editing. You can see that there's already some edits that I did on this one because I edited it last night. Let me just go ahead and reset these edits. Um, brain fighting here, Rich, where is the reset in here? Uh, hold on the option key. And now you have reset on all those tools. Oh, there we go. There's reset. So I just want to take this back to square one. Come on, reset. You can scroll up to each of those sections and click on there's a reset button by each group. There all right, go. let's just do reset basic. That takes me close to where I wanted. So I'd already straightened the image. A lot of times when I'm shooting and I come back and I start developing, I like to try the auto. So Lightroom and Adobe Camera Raw have the same auto settings, and I find them to be quite useful to get me closer to where I want to be. Now, I don't always agree with those settings. So what I can do is come down and start to tweak them. So maybe I think that made that a little dark. I can brighten it back up, pull those highlights down a little bit more. So I want less of these bright areas, but I want the overall brightness from a little bit more exposure. And I can add a little bit of clarity. I can throw a little bit of dehaze on there and just make some subtle adjustments. And if this is as far as I wanna go, then I can go ahead and save this back to Mylio very, very easily. If I wanna go further, and let's say I wanna take care of trying to get rid of some of these twigs that are sticking up into the horizon, I can go into Photoshop and remove those as well. If you wanna go on to Photoshop, you just click open here in the bottom right, and that's gonna open this with your adjustments from Adobe Camera Raw right into Photoshop. If you're done, the best thing to do is go up to this export button here in the upper right. I'm gonna go ahead and click that. And you'll see that I've created some presets. So by default, you have save as DNG, save as JPEG. And then I created save as TIFF. And then I have a Mylio display copy TIFF and a Mylio display copy JPEG. So what these do is it automatically adds that underscore display, which makes Mylio stack it with the original. So to save a preset like this, it's very, very easy. You just go ahead and let's go ahead and save this. Choose one of the defaults. And I'm gonna put it save in same location. And file name, what we wanna do is do the document name plus, and you add in that underscore display. And you keep the file uh, extension as a JPEG, format JPEG. You set all of your settings the way you want. And then if you come back up here to the preset dropdown, you now have an option to save this preset as a new preset. And you can call this whatever you want. So you can just call this Mylio JPEG. And that's going to automatically create a preset that you can use later on to stack this with your originals back in Mylio. So I've already done that with this Mylio Display Copy JPEG. And now I can just hit save. And that's going to send that right back to Mylio Photos. And I can jump back over. Eventually, when that syncs up, it's going to stack it with this image here in Mylio. And I'll see my edit on top of my raw. And that has become the easiest way for me to do the edits like I want to do them with tools that I'm familiar with quickly and easily straight from Mylio Photos without having to manage two separate libraries because that gets really tedious over time. I know people do it. It's totally possible, but it is a few extra steps. This has just made my life much, much easier. Good. Well, I'm going to do one more edit inside of Mylio Photos, and then I think we'll have to switch on over uh, pretty soon here to the coffee break. So uh, I just want to show you what we can do with the built-in tools really quick. So uh, here's my daughter at a Renaissance fair. Uh, she's climbing. I probably could find a slightly sharper version of this. So let me check here really quick. One cool trick a lot of people forget about is uh, you can right-click on a photo and say reveal or show in folder, for example, uh, and that will take you to the specific folder where that was captured. Uh, and that will allow you to go and then find that image and find others like it. So that could be quite useful there uh, if you're trying to find other options. So you can step in that way nice and easy. Uh, so that's just a nice quick way to, to get to that. And so this took me right to that folder and I can look here for some that have just a better focal point. I think I like the facial expression here. And that's a bit sharper. So we're going to go with that one. So first off, auto color is great at bringing back skin tones. Uh, it's able to find that, bring those to life. 
And then if you look at the temperature and tint here, you can still finesse that a little bit warmer, a little bit cooler. Then take a look here at your levels uh, and the luminance channel. And it's really easy to move that midpoint slider to recover the middle or go ahead and move the black slider to put a little bit of crispness into the black. So that's a great way besides shadows and highlights to really do that. Then this is a case where, you know, I got a really blown out background. Uh, so using that vignette, I'm going to go ahead here and start by making this a bit smaller. I'm leaving it not blended yet. Then I could tweak the roundness of that and actually rotate it to match her body. Now with choose subject, I'm just going to move that so that's more centered over her and I'll click done. Then I just got to scroll back to the vignette controls. I'm not sure why it scrolls. We're working on that. Um, but I'll come here to those controls and I'm just going to finesse it a little bit. There we go. Let's feather that heavily and not go quite so much on the amount. And now I could tone the feather down. And so what this does is it just creates a nice little blend that pulls your eye into the subject and removes it from being pulled out to the edges of the shot. So that's just a, a real simple way to do that. And remember, this is perfect on all types of images. So even if you've got a black and white, let's just reset this here really quick. Uh, you can totally benefit from still using the auto color on a black and white because it's still analyzed. Because when you scanned in that black and white, you probably scanned it in as an RGB image. Maybe you did it as grayscale, but even still, you could still go into each of these channels and watch what happens here. So you could balance that. Even if you click black and white, those color channels still stay active. So watch this. I can manipulate the green channel to control more of the grassy area and how that is part of the black and white file. Then I can go to the blue channel and adjust the area that's affecting the sky a little bit to balance that. And so you could do that initial balancing up here using those sliders, then come up here and still further mix those a little bit further to balance out the different areas for those channels. See, there's the blue sky, for example. And so you could use that for a nice little bit of recovery just to kind of get it in the ballpark for an improved uh, exposure there where like the washed out areas are now nice and crisp. Then take advantage of your regular tonal adjustments here. This is where I can make the blacks sharper, lift up the, the highlights a little bit. And you see there we can play with the sky area. And I could take those highlights down and the white point up. And so this just lets you really balance that image and finesse it so that you get better contrast on those black and whites. And even though the image isn't even sharpened yet, you can see that the improvement in tonality definitely helps it come through. And then don't be afraid to put a little bit of extra sharpening on that older image. And again, we are able to transform that. And feel free, you can still use a vignette on something like this. Just remember to place it over your subject. And then you can dial that in. And just finesse it to taste. Again, make sure it has a heavy feather. Play with the amount slider. And then you can adjust the size like such. And so just a little bit there, what that's doing nicely is guiding your eye into the subject where you should be looking. So just some cool things you can do with all types of pictures right here within the app. And remember, you can come in and easily save that as your own preset. So if this is something you want for older photos, I can call this, for example, uh, black and white restore. and tell it to include not the crop tools, but all the sliders and I'll hit save. So now if I go to a, another black and white image, or for that matter, if I want to make a black and white image, 
you can actually go in there and locate your preset and click and then reuse that. So some pretty cool things we can do uh, to finesse and make things reusable.